Radiation safety is an essential in acquiring quality images in CT as it is in diagnostic radiology. Our code of conduct, as well as our professional standards, guides us in these practices. The term ALARA, which was learned in radiography school, also applies to our scanning methods in CT. We must pay attention to the safety of our patients and make our time with them as harmless as possible, as this can make a big difference to the examination and how they perceive us as professionals. After completing this module, you will be able to describe the methods used to measure patient dose, understand the role of the CT technologist in reducing patient dose, explain why pediatric patients require special consideration, discuss the pros and cons of patient shielding, and finally list the methods used in personnel protection. Before we begin to talk about safety with doses, let's start by reviewing some radiation physics. In this section, we will discuss how radiation interacts with matter, the attenuation principle, and its relation with the Hounsfield units of various tissues. We will also look at how we measure doses and methods of reducing doses in CT scanning. The National Council on Radiation Protection, or NCRP, was established to support radiation protection by providing independent scientific analysis, information, and recommendations that represent the consensus of leading scientists. The International Commission on Radiologic Protection, ICRP, is an independent, international, non-governmental organization whose mission is to provide recommendations and guidance on radiological protection concerning ionizing radiation. Radiation interaction with matter is the same in CT as it is in diagnostic radiology. The basic units, rad, rem, and the Rankin are terms learned in radiography education, but warrant reviewing here. If you recall, RAD stands for radiation absorbed dose, or the amount of radiation which is absorbed by the patient. The term has been replaced by the gray, which is the international system of units term. REM, or Rentgen equivalent man describes the type of radiation a person is exposed to. This term is used in measuring the dosage that personnel working in CT use who are exposed to. It has been replaced with the International Systems of Units term Sievert. And finally, the Rentgen which is used to measure how much radiation is in the air. It is important to remember that you will not have to calculate patient dose as the CT scanner will do this for you. Let's now look at how radiation is attenuated. Attenuation is one of the physical principles of radiation interaction. If you recall, it is the reduction in number of the X-ray photons in the beam and the subsequent loss of energy as the beam passes through matter, or the patient in this instance. In CT, as in diagnostic radiology, attenuation is dependent on the type of tissue being scanned, such as the soft tissue, bone, blood, or muscle. Each type of tissue attenuates a different amount of photons, 
which results in image differences on the finished scan. The denser the tissue, the greater the attenuation of the beam. Let's now look at how attenuation in a CT scan is measured. In 1979, the Nobel Prize was awarded to Godfrey Hounsfield and what were previously known as computed tomography numbers were then named after him. Hounsfield numbers are based on a series of tissue density values calculated by comparing the linear attenuation coefficients of each pixel to that of water. The Hounsfield unit of water is always zero. This chart demonstrates the average Hounsfield units of various tissue densities. As we previously stated, the denser the material irradiated, the greater the attenuation occurs within that tissue. By looking at this chart, we can see that the denser the tissue, the higher the Hounsfield number assigned, making an area appear more radio-opaque or white on the image. The less dense the tissue irradiated, the smaller the Hounsfield unit assigned, causing an area to look more radiolucent or black. There are many factors that affect dose in CT. Dose reduction techniques, in addition to methods which were developed to account for variation between patients, has been developed. How a scan is performed can directly affect the dose deposited into the patient. Patient-specific factors include age, size, and sex, all of which play a role in deposited dosage. We need to discuss the absorbed dose, the delivered dose, and the effective dose. While there are many stakeholders, such as the FDA and the NRC, who oversee patient and personnel safety, the first line of defense in the use of CT dose reduction is the individual facility. Radiologists, technologists, and physicists play an important role in reducing doses during scanning. Let's talk about how we do this. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, Check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.